Hello, in this video we're going to find the GCF, or the greatest common factor, of monomials. First thing we're going to do is we're going to factor the whole number completely using prime factorization. It's really important that you factor things all the way down, especially when comparing several monomials. But there is a shortcut. If you recognize a common factor early, then there's no need to factor the monomial all the way down, factor the whole number all the way down. Just recognize when you see a common factor and you can stop there. You're also going to factor the variable portion. For example, x squared would be x times x. But as soon as you are comfortable with this procedure, you're going to be able to find the GCF of the variables without factoring. But this will come with practice. When you're first learning the technique, it's important that you actually factor things like y cubed is y times y times y. And then the rest will, become, will come with practice. After everything is factored, you're going to circle any factors that are common to all the monomials. If you're comparing two monomials, you just want to look for what's common on both lists. But if you're comparing three monomials, you want to see what's on all three lists. Once you've circled all the common factors, you're going to multiply them, and that will give you the GCF of the monomials. So let's do some examples. Here we have the GCF of 18 and 24. And we're going to actually do this one two different ways. We're going to do it the elementary school way, and then we're going to do it the way that I'm suggesting up here. In elementary school, you might have actually done a factor rainbow, at least that's what I call it, 1 times 18, and that's those are paired, 1 times 18, and then you actually have 2 times 9, so you can multiply those two together, and Next we have 3 times 6, and those are multiplied together. And notice that our factors are getting closer together. They kind of bridge the gap. 4 doesn't go into 18, 5 doesn't go into 18. So these are all my factors, 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. And then I repeat the process with 24. 1 times 24, and again, I make kind of like a little, little factor rainbow here. Or we can have 2 times 12. And moving up the ladder, 3 times 8. And then next we can have 4 times 6. And that kind of bridges the gap. 5 does not go into 24. So again, our list of entire list of factors is 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. Now I'm showing you this for a reason, because Students in elementary school are asked just to find the biggest number that appears on both lists. And in this case, 6 is the greatest common factor. Now, that works great for elementary school, but when we start getting into monomials, we're going to want to do it a slightly more advanced way. We're going to use the, the method that we were teaching up here about factoring and finding common factors. So again, let's list 18, but this time it's 18x squared, and then 24xy. And what we're going to do now is we're going to list all the factors. So 18 is 2 times 9, or 2 times 3 times 3. 24 is 2 times 12, 12 is 2 times 6, and 6 is 2 times 3. So 18, or 24 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And then let's take a look at the variables. We have x squared, and I'm just going to write x times x. And you'll, you'll get used to this. And then over here is an x, and I'll switch colors one more time and write our y. And now what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to go in, according to our list of skills or our, our steps, we're going to circle any factors common to all the monomials. So in this case, we have a 2, which is on both lists. We have a 3, which is on both lists. And we have an x, which is on both lists. So 2 times 3 times x gives us our final answer of 6x. That's our final answer. Let's take a look at another one. We have 15 a cubed b squared, and we have 20a squared b to the fourth. 
So let's list our factors. 15 is 3 times 5. 20 is 2 times 10, and 10 is 2 times 5. So 2 times 2 times 5. Now let's take a look at these a's. Here's going to have a times a times a is a cubed. Over here is a times a is a squared. And then let's do the b's. b times b is b squared. And then b times b times b times b is b to the fourth. Now again, we're just learning how to do this technique. And once you get good at it, you won't have to write out the variables all the time. You'll, you'll just learn to recognize them. But now let's take a look at the whole numbers, the whole number factors. I see 5 appears on both lists. So I can write a 5 here. I see an, an A appears on both lists. And a second A appears on both lists. So I'm going to write A squared. And lastly, a B appears on both lists. And another B appears on both lists. So I have a B squared. So my final answer is 5a squared, b squared. Now on this next one, I'm going to caution you. I'm going to say we have 400 and 150. Now if you wanted to factor 400 all the way down, you know, just for giggles, we'll do it. 2 times 200, uh, 2 times 100, 2 times 50, 2 times 25, and then 5 times 5. So 400 actually factors down to 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 times 5. But what I'm going to say is we're not even going to, we're not going to do that. We are not going to factor it all the way down. We are actually going to try to recognize a common factor early on in the process. So instead of factoring 400 and 150 all the way down, what we're going to do is we're going to try to recognize a common factor early on in the process. And I hope you can see that 50 goes into 450 goes into 150. So 400 is really 50 times 8. And 150 is 50 times 3. Now I could factor 8 further, right? I could write 2 times 2 times 2, but I'm just going to leave it as 8. Or, or, well, I guess it's too late now. I've already scribbled it out. So this is 50 times 2 times 2 times 2, and this is 50 times 3. Now how about the x to the sevenths? If you'd like, I can write x times itself seven times. Now, I think that's going to get pretty tedious, so let's not do that. Let's instead recognize that x to the seventh actually goes into both of these. So I can write an x to the seventh times x cubed. And now I look for my common factors. So what's a common factor? 50 appears on both lists. So 50 is one of the common factors. Twos do not appear on both lists. Three do not appear on both lists. But I also have an x to the seventh. So 50x to the seventh. So I hope you see in this last example, I tried to streamline the process a little bit. When you're learning, you want to write everything out. You want to write all the factors all the way up, the prime factorization. But once you start getting good at it, you're going to start recognizing common factors right away. Now, lastly, let's do one where we actually are factoring three numbers. So we have a 12p squared, an 18p cubed q, and a 20p q. So let's start listing factors. 12 is 2 times 6. 6 is 2 times 3. So 2 times 2 times 3. 18 is 2 times 9. 9 is 3 times 3. 20 is 2 times 10. 10 is 2 times 5. Now let's take a look at these p's. Here I've got a p times p. Here I have a p times p times p. And lastly I just have a p. And now finally, let's look at the Q's. I've got no Q's up here. I've got one Q here. <coughs> and I've got one Q here. And so now we're going to take a look at what's common to all the lists. So again, it has to be common to all three lists. That's one of the important uh, distinctions and one of the mistakes that students make. Two appears on all three lists. Now what about another two? I've got a two here. On the top list and a 2 here on the bottom list, but 2 does not appear on all three lists, the second 2. What about a 3? 
I've got a three that appears on the top list and a three on the second list, but oh, I made a mistake. Three does not appear on the bottom list. So three is not, is not good. And how about the variables? Well, I've got a P. A P appears on all three lists. But what about a second P? No, nope, only appears on two lists. And what about this Q? Q only appears on two of the lists. So Q is not good enough. So my final answer, the GCF of these three monomials is simply 2P. And that is our final answer. Hmm.